Hi, I'm Nick, and today we're going to show you how to resolve Android WCAG pointer gesture violations. WCAG 2.5.1 titled Pointer Gestures states that all functionality that uses multi-point or path-based gestures can be operated using a single pointer without path-based gestures. The intent of the success criterion is to make sure that all content within your application can be controlled by a range of pointing devices, abilities, and assistive technologies. This success criterion benefits users who cannot perform gestures in a precise manner or users who use assistive technologies such as head pointers, eye beam systems, and speech controlled mouse simulators. Path based gestures include any gesture interaction that does not depend on only the endpoint, so rather has an intermediate point that the user must meet while making their gesture. Examples of path based gestures include swiping sliders or carousels that are dependent on the direction of interaction, or on other gestures that require the user to trace a prescribed path. The dragging motion, where the intermediate points are irrelevant, is covered by a separate success criteria, WCAG 2.5.7. Examples of multi-point gestures include two-finger pinch zoom, or a split tap, which requires one finger on the screen and another finger to tap, or on two-finger or three-finger sliding or swiping gestures. This success criteria allows the use of multi-point or path-based gestures so long as the underlying functionality can be operated by another method. For more details on the specifics of WCAG point-based gestures, check out this link here. Link also in the description down below. Let's go and fix an Android WCAG pointer gesture violation with the help of the Mesmer Accessibility Audit. But first, don't forget to point your gesture down and subscribe to the channel. Here we have a pointer gesture violation. We can explore the app map to find the screen containing this violation. Now that we know where this violation is located, let's pull up our emulator to take a better look. From our emulator, we can try navigating this page's functionality. Quickly it becomes apparent that the only way to change this number is to use a pointer gesture that depends on multi-point, which uses zoom to change the number. Here we can show this using control click on the emulator to zoom. Let's go to the code so we can resolve this violation. From the XML file, we can add two buttons to add a location for a single pointer gesture to access this functionality, and then from the Kotlin file, we can add listeners to these buttons to increase or decrease the number, depending on the button selected. Let's rebuild our application so we can take a look now. From the emulator, we can now see that the user is able to operate changes to this number without using a multi-point gesture, thus resolving this violation. And just like that, we resolved our Android WCAG pointer gesture violation. How do you promote accessibility and diversity within your company? Let us know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching and happy developing.